Today, I'm setting the record straight on the First Nations blockade and now arrests in northern British Columbia. Look, if you got all your news from the mainstream media, I don't think you would know what the heck was going on most days. And the media outlets we normally suspect to be right-leaning or centrist, they're often just as bad as the others because of the colonization of newsrooms by left-wing activists. Case in point, my beloved Edmonton son. I saw this tweet roll across my news feed today. Watch. Edmontonians rally in support of Wet'suwet'en First Nation. On Monday, RCMP breached a checkpoint created on unceded Wet'suwet'en First Nations territory and arrested 14 people. You know, that sounds horrible. Let's click open the link, shall we? The article reads that the Wet'suwet'en are currently blocking access to a planned pipeline on their land in northern BC. On Monday, RCMP breached a checkpoint created on unceded Wet'suwet'en First Nations territory and arrested 14 people. You know what? That sounds pretty police statey. If you didn't know any better, if you got your news from whomever this SJW is that's writing for the Edmonton Sun, the RCMP in northern British Columbia are just a bunch of totalitarian thugs. Breaching means that the RCMP are the invaders here. It's really no wonder my colleague Kian Bexi encountered this anti-police crazy person yesterday. Just watch. What brings you to this protest today? I'm trying to teach my son about the difference between good and evil. And there isn't a point in using metaphor when it's bare in front of us. So the difference between good and evil, these police officers right here that are protecting... That are abducting indigenous people off of their sovereign lands. No, I want to tell them to stop abducting Indigenous activists. Release all political prisoners. Get your boots off of Indigenous soil. What you just saw there is someone who is far above her daily recommended intake of the mainstream media, that's for sure. But here's what's really happening. Yes, 14 protesters were arrested this past Monday. But the RCMP are enforcing a December 14th injunction granted by the Supreme Court of British Columbia to Coastal Gas Link. That Supreme Court injunction orders the checkpoints set up by the First Nations protesters to give construction crews access to the road. It isn't even an injunction that orders the checkpoints down. The injunction says that the gas company needs to be able to do its work unimpeded. Now let's go back a little though to where it all began. How did we get here to these arrests? The elected band council of this First Nation in northern British Columbia signed an agreement with a pipeline builder called Coastal Gas Link, which incidentally is a subsidiary of TransCanada Pipeline Corporation to allow a $6.2 billion gas pipeline to cross their lands. It's all part of a $40 billion natural gas project that includes this pipeline and export terminals in Kitimat, British Columbia. This current pipeline actually received its environmental approval way back in 2014. Thank you, Stephen Harper. The company signed agreements with 20 First Nations groups along the route. Should be great, right? Good to go. These bands along the route, they're going to get rich. They're going to crawl out of poverty and do wonderful things for their communities with all that money and those jobs. But here come the hereditary chiefs. They are unelected. And a portion of this pipeline crosses land they think they are in charge of, despite the elected chiefs already giving the go-ahead for the pipeline. So the hereditary chiefs and their supporters have set up checkpoints, blocking gas link, from building the pipeline and putting $40 billion in economic benefits with much of it going to Aboriginal communities at risk. GasLink sought an injunction and they got it three weeks ago. The company and police gave the protesters ample time to follow the law and they refused, so action was taken. No surprise. But this all reminds me of the self-appointed representatives of First Nations communities who camped out in the ditch on Burnaby Mountain at an encampment called Camp Cloud. Those people appointed themselves the voice of Aboriginal people 
despite the will of all the First Nations groups along the route of the proposed Kinder Morgan Trans Mountain Pipeline expansion. Finally, the protesters fell victim to a court injunction and life went back to normal on the mountain. Now, rallies and protests did happen all across the country Tuesday in support of the hereditary chief's blockade. And the protests, like you saw earlier from Calgary, had a pretty anti-police slant to them. But if you support the hereditary chiefs, Aren't you really undermining the democratic will of band members who elected their own band councils and who signed off on their decisions? Don't they get a say in all of this? Don't they get to determine their own future? And aren't you making their votes for band council completely meaningless? To use a phrase the left loves to throw around, this is paternalism. Unelected hereditary chiefs are deciding they know what's best for other people after those other people have already chosen something for themselves. Regular band members are being completely disenfranchised and their fate is being colonized by hereditary chiefs and their anti-oil left-wing enablers. If the left truly cares about the autonomy of First Nations, then they should turn their backs on these unelected cranks and lawbreakers and thank the RCMP for enforcing that court injunction. For the Rebel.media, I'm Sheila Gunn-Reed. The mainstream media is truly awful some days, but the left, well, they want that to be the only news that you consume. They love to deplatform conservative journalists and conservative media outlets, but we have a way around that. We have our new Rebel Media mobile app. It's available on the Google Play Store or the Apple App Store. Download it, give it a whirl, and take the other side of the story with you wherever you go.